Hey everybody, it's Aquila, and this is a Lefty Knitter Podcast, uh, episode two something. <laughs> I'm recording on Sunday, July 30th. Um, yeah, this is a podcast normally recorded with clips of the week, which I do have some clips, but not many where I'm talking. You would have already seen the previous clip of me making a tomato sandwich. But tomato sandwiches are a huge thing. We're from Baltimore, Maryland. Maryland is well, well known for our Maryland tomatoes. And if you've never had a tomato sandwich with a Maryland tomato, you just have to try it. It's salt, pepper, you can put Old Bay, mayonnaise. You can toast your bread or untoasted. I like mine untoasted because I like it to get all mushy. <laughs> That's just me. Yeah, and then some tomatoes. So if you've never, if you like tomatoes and you've never had a tomato sandwich, I highly encourage you. <laughs> PSA for the day. Oh boy. All right, so uh, this is normally a mostly fiber arts podcast. Sometimes I throw in other things that I've been doing that's crafty and yeah. I think I mentioned in previous episodes that July is a really hard month. June and July for my work is really difficult. July is really difficult, like really, really difficult. Um, and we've just had some other things that, you know, haven't been the greatest, losing my cat, and then we had some other stuff. And not everything has been bad, but it's been enough that it's drained me. It's drained me a whole lot. and. I've come home and I've done crafting. I just haven't wanted to turn a camera on or, or even talk. So I've just recorded, I'll have clips of me at the end doing watercolor. If you have any interest in watching and staying tuned for that, then I highly encourage you to stay and watch the whole video. But yeah, I just haven't had enough energy to put out content and so I've worked on things that I've wanted to work on I've slowed down and just did what we needed to do in the house to keep our household functioning and yeah and that's been that's been the the most of it so uh yeah I am so very close so very close to finishing my ripple Oh my god, I forgot. It's the the Ripple Cardigan. No, not the Ripple. The Ripple Camisole by Jessie Made. I did bust into, and it's kind of sad that I had to bust into a second skein, but at the same time, I also, well, let me just show you. Let me just show you. It is a ribbed tank top, essentially, camisole. And... You're supposed to knit the body to so many inches. Well, when I tried it on at so many inches and the top of your knitting, because it's a bottom-up garment, it wasn't quite as long as I would want it to be. So I did knit a little bit further. I think I took my marker out of how much further I knit. But let's get this to a position where you can see what's happening. So this is the front, okay? And hold one... Pause, please. Um, I have some stitches on hold. And then I have where I joined my other yarn. So it's kind of a hot mess. So this is one side here. This is the other side. So I was, when you guys last saw it, I was here. So I put a lot of work into it. Now, all of these patterns, like her bralette and everything else, it looks really tiny. It will go on. This is a little, uh, so they're kind of like negative ease in, in, in essence. So when you knit this to the so many inches and then you stretch this out, it's not gonna be that many inches. So anytime you're making a hat or socks or a garment that has negative ease, hats don't always have negative ease, but in general, when you are making something like, and, and whatever, it, even if it's not negative ease, and you take it and you do this, 
and you make it wider, you're gonna lose length. I don't know if there's a ratio to this or a percentage of how much you would lose. I think it depends on how much you're stretching it, but you're gonna lose it. So I learned this very early on when I was making sock tubes for people and I was cranking, one of my services is I crank the leg for so long and I had a customer that was like, oh, can you customize it? I want him to be really tall because I only had up to like 10 inches or something in the listing. And I was like, sure, no problem. Well, even with the smaller ones, I should say this, even with the smaller ones, when people were like, oh, I want a seven inch leg, I would crank an eight inch leg because once you stretch it, you lose, you lose some of your length. So even though this said to knit to so many inches, I knit further than that because when I tried it on at the fullest part of your bust is where the top of it was, it wasn't as long as I wanted it to be. So I think I knit like another two inches, just so you guys can have an idea. So all the back stitches are still on hold. These are the front panels here. And this strap is on hold because you're gonna graft it eventually. So I'm, I just have to do the strap part on this one. Then I have to do the back Vs and this will be pretty much done. I have been knitting on this a lot, watching Good Omens. So if you've not seen that show, it's on Prime. It has, I can't think of the guy's name. He was one of the doctors from Doctor Who. David Tennant, I think. I've been watching that. I, I really enjoy it. It's a Neil, it's a produced by Neil Gaiman, or it was a book written by him first, and as probably maybe other people, but I don't, I don't know all the details. And I've been listening to some audiobooks too. Again, not enough brain space to put out here to you guys what this is really about. Um, I just, I don't have it in me. They'll be listed below because I list everything down below. If you have any questions, let me know. But I try to list all the designers and the pattern names and links down below and where you can find me at. The other thing that I did is I am doing the Stephen West sock along. So if you don't, if you haven't, if you aren't knitting it and you don't care, just keep on watching. Or if you aren't to clue four, don't watch because I have finished only one of the socks for clue four. I haven't put any on sock number two for the clue, the fourth clue yet, but I have finished except weaving in ends. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit because I feel like, I don't know, if you're not, I want to talk about it. So I feel bad like putting this out, but like Clue 4 has been out now for, I don't know, some time. So Clue 4 had you, you had done a little bit on the foot and then Clue 4 had you finishing the foot and the toe. So here is the sock. Do what are the are these going to be an everyday sock? Am I ever going No, they're not. Are they going to be a sock I ever wear again? Nope, they're definitely or make again. Nope, definitely not. The novelty of making it and wearing them as house socks, totally down for it. Totally down for it. I think people were talking Okay, so let's go back. Clue four started here and you're repeating this section, but it's a little bit different because they're not staggered. They spiral, the little bloopies here spiral and the bottom isn't textured at all. Just so you know, I don't think if I were to wear these in socks, I want this texture. See the bumpies, the bumpies. I don't want that in my shoe, first off. Then I think people were not very, uh, they were not happy with doing this cable in the decrease of the gusset, which was clue three. And I was a little worried. I was worried, I was concerned that these, this cabling was gonna pull it in and make my sock too tight. It didn't, it fit fine. But I do think people have taken that out because they didn't want to do it. And they left the four stitches because it's a four, cable, four stitch cable. And then they were too big. 
So if I were to suggest anything, and you are going to take that out, <laughs> take out those four stitches, decrease, do a decrease in your gusset here to take out those four stitches because I feel like it's going to be big. Because cabling brings your knitting in. It, it pulls it in. The other thing that I've never done before or even thought about doing, which was interesting, is this broken rib toe. Let me turn it so you can see. It's a broken rib. Interesting, yes, again, concerns about it in my shoe. Yep. I love this part and I would knit a whole sock in this, this part right here. Um, so if he does another one, will I do it? Yeah, I will. Because I learned things from it. I thought it was interesting. Actually, my biggest concern, I, people were concerned about these, the, my, the cable, which my biggest concern was at some point for this cable, you're slipping those four because you're never knitting with pink. You're always slipping the, those. But you're also slipping two other stitches sometimes. So you're slipping six stitches. Normally, when I'm doing a fingering weight and I'm slipping anything more than five or six, I'm catching a float. But I didn't catch any floats, so there are floats on the back side um, because you're slipping five stitches six stitches. Um, I thought that was going to leave gaps. I didn't get any gapping. I, I Some people had gapping. Oh, I did have a little bit right there. Um, I didn't have that. I still think they're cool, but I can see why people were like frustrated, not happy, but so many projects out there for this. I am curious, looking in maybe a week or two, sorry, I'm still showing this, in a week or two, maybe longer than that, going and seeing how many of the project pages actually have finished objects. I know not all people always update that, but I think when they, when this came out, and right before the clue came out, I think there was over like 2,000, might even be more, project pages for this knit along. That's a lot. And I know his shawls always get that too. They always have a ton. But, all right, I'm going to put this down now. I am going to obviously finish the second one. I think they're cool. Um, but I just don't think I'm going to wear them in shoes. I'll wear them with like my slides and slippers, but probably not with um, shoes to go out in. Maybe, maybe boots, mm, maybe not. All right, so I told you guys I've been just kind of taking it easy and slowing it down. And um, we've been, I'm gonna insert a clip here. Hello. So I'm gonna be recording a little clip while Hazel is not here. So I figured I'd ask her to come on and show what we have been doing. What have we been doing lately? We've been doing watercolors, and I, I've i been really liking these. It's black, plain mm -hmm. black, or plain white. So I bought these. So I'm going to talk about the rest of the stuff I bought, but um, we're going to insert this video, but I'll show these now. These are made by Legion. And these are, this one is a cold press, but it's the black. These were two fifty at the Blick store, so I feel like for ten sheets you can paint both sides. Ten fifty. Yeah. We wanted to try some of our iridescent colors, right, and some gel pens on the black. And, and then we have just the white. But this is a hot press, so hot press. Feel the hot press. Feel it like this. How's that feel? Is it is it smooth or rough or textured? Kind of rough. Okay. <laughs> feel this one. How's that one feel compared to this one? Oh, it's rough. Okay, so I didn't feel the other one. Cold pressed paper is rough and hot pressed paper is smooth. I drew this one with the white. Mm -hmm. It's a cute, and the birds think blue. I just wanted to do that. And I drew this one and then I Painted? made paint yeah. Yeah, with the black. Mm -hmm. It says be kind at the bottom. Mm -hmm. There also is another thing I want to show you. They gave us this No, paper. no, I, I purchased it. 
<laughs> I purchased it. Passion to, to see all the different colors and like to test them out. So I tested them all out and something that mommy is going to show at the end on this paper. I, I just did that. So these are so the Daniel go, Smith line of watercolors and you can get these little dots. This to, is what they look on the dots and this is what they look on like paper. Mm-hmm. I didn't do every one because there's like white shimmery stuff ones. Yeah, and those wouldn't really show up so yeah. much. Oh, and it has a code. Did you see that? It's transparent. I, I was looking at that. That's pretty cool. I was looking at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. the back row, so so we've been her. we've been having a lot of fun doing. We're playing with watercolor and um, yeah. So I just wanted to bring Hazel on. She's done more than what she's shown you, and actually. I have um, They're over there. a little, over there. if you want to show them, you can, if you don't. Oh, yeah, I'll be back. I have um, some actual watercolor, um, like, notebooks coming for her and I. Um, I did spend a little bit of money yesterday, but that's okay. Yeah. We're going to use it. You might as well just show everything, because people, so, people want to see what you've done. A little bird. Mm -hmm. And a nest. Yeah, mm -hmm. full of her colorful eggs. Oh boy. She drew this, but I colored painted it in. I just wanted to do like rainbow dots. It's a pop panda bear. A koala. Oh yeah, it's a koala. <laughs> Never mind. It's not the oh, greatest. Not the... I was trying to do a line drawing without picking up my pen. Yeah. I don't know why I grabbed this. Okay, okay. it's okay. These are high. Some of those are just what you've been doing. Can you guys Play. tell what's in the background? And then you were testing out colors again. I was testing out some colors on this sheet. Mm -hmm. Now you can paint the back of that too. Yeah. So. Still. Because like, look, the watercolor so paper is a lot white. thicker, a lot better for doing watercolor. So. All right. So that's what Hayes has to show you. So. Oh, and she got a kangaroo poly pocket. Yeah. Yeah. This is so fuzzy. I it love is. that. With the baby kangaroo. It's pretty funny. And it opens up and it's like a playground. Except it just has like a swing. Okay, it's still pretty cool. All right, so um, say so nice things to people, right? What do we say? Be kind, everybody. Be kind, everybody. Thanks for being. Thanks for being. <laughs> thanks for being wonderful. Bye. <laughs> that monster, she's so cute. Okay, so um, we we both have been just using Crayola watercolor. Not the greatest watercolor. It works. It works. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I asked my husband, I was like, can we go to like a real art store? And we have a few art colleges. So we went into the city and went to Blick. Um, Blick, I think, is also related to the Utrecht. So when I was in art school in college, we had a Utrecht and we used to go to Utrecht and I loved going to Utrecht. And um, we don't have a Utrecht here. It's just it's called Blick, but I think they're all related. I could be wrong about that. So I was like, can we go to a real art store? So we did. And I spent a little bit of money. But um, I've been doing this for a little bit now. And I don't see where I'm going to fully stop. But I'm not going to become like a professional watercolor artist. Nor do I. That's not my goal. My goal is um, letting some of my creativity out and just going with the flow. So... I feel like it's just a needed thing, not, it's like therapy, art therapy. Um, so I bought a new set of watercolors. Now, I had done a little bit of research, but not a whole lot. So I ended up buying a Winsor Newton set. This is 12 colors in here. You can get the refillable pots for this. What is this for? Interesting. No. Oh, to hold it? Would you do that? Would people do that? Is that what that's for? I wouldn't do that. Okay. Sorry. It comes with 12 pucks or pots. It comes with a card that you can put all your sample colors on, which I've already done. And I bought three extra colors because it didn't have... I wanted another green, I wanted a teal, and there wasn't like a, a purple. So I bought three extra pots of color or pucks of color. And you can buy them online and they give you a color card when you buy it. So it has spots for you to be able to mix color, 
on both sides. You can put brushes in here. And then here are the colors that I have in here currently. Um, so I, Hazel's been, I've been letting her use it. I told her you have to be very careful. Um, I don't want you dipping in colors, mix it always in the palette. So she's been very good about it. The other thing I did purchase there was those two little pads that she showed. I bought myself, these are not for her. I bought us both um, some nicer pa paint brushes that were not really expensive, um, but I bought myself a nicer set. Um, so I got a four set, um, three rounds, a two, a six, and an eight, cause, or two, six, and a ten, because I already bought myself. Oh, I bought a 10. I thought I had bought an 8. Well, now I have two 10s. Either way, it's okay. I had bought in this Princeton off Amazon. And then I bought these Neptune. Oh, they're Princeton also. But these, oh, this is Velvet Touch. These are Neptunes. Okay. You know what? <laughs> it does say Neptune. Okay, either way. Now I have three more rounds and a new flat. So... Um, not inexpensive, like 30 bucks. And I did buy myself an actual watercolor paper. I had some watercolor paper, but I bought a book. Um, the other one is a, a, ta a, a tablet, not a tablet, um, where you rip the pages out. This one, I can turn the pages and I don't have to rip them out. So I bought, um, it's 20 pages and you can use the front and back. So, because they're so, so thick. So I bought that. Um, it's okay. It's okay. So let's just show you some watercolors, and that's going to be the end of this. John and I have been watching gems, the the mighty gemstones. What was that show called? <laughs> Not inglorious gemstones. Whatever that show. It's I don't know. We've been watching that, and then really just zoning out <laughs> a lot to TV. Um, I've been watching a whole lot. Hazel had showed you guys that little black palette, so I had ripped one out and used that the other day, yesterday. Just playing around with some of the iridescent and lighter colors. Thought that was fun. Now everything I'm going to show you in these books, I may have shown previews already or shown you them actually on Instagram if you follow me there. I'm just going to show a few. So this is a book that John had gotten me. Um, we have like a I talked about the store before. It's kind of like gems and crystals and witchy stuff. And John had gotten me this little book, or Hazel and John. No, I think this came from the Celtic Festival. I apologize. The Celtic Festival when it was here. Um, so John and Hazel had gotten me this. And I'll just show you a few. I've shown you the early, early ones, but I'll show you. I'll just back up to like here. Because I don't think I've ever showed them on the podcast. So doing my blobs. Doing some just drawing first with a marker. A lot of the stuff I follow, Andrea Nelson and something unicorn. I watch both of them. This one I like a lot. Now this paper is not really for watercolor. It's not really thick enough, but I've still been doing it. And then just doing some flowers. This is supposed to be an exercise in removing color. Um, so you can kind of see the jellyfish. Then an owl, just another one of those line drawings where you don't pick up your pen, you just keep going. Uh, continuous line drawing. This is supposed to be more like geodes. So it's just practicing having a lot of water on your paper and then having the water, the adding paint to the edges and like pulling it in or you know into the centers um, a lot of these are just watercolor exercises this was just playing with petals so playing with my um, paintbrush this was another one that she had kind of done it was supposed to mimic like how petals of flowers on the edge where the bud part is 
get that green tinge and it was just layering messed up real bad down here but I think it's because this paper is just not the greatest and then this was with the new paints that I just showed you I really I really like my flowers up top they're they're probably my favorite flowers I've done and then that's the last thing in this book and then the bigger book I have a few things and then I promise you I'm gonna shut up about watercolor I'm just I, this has just been freeing my brain of things. So, I'll just start at the beginning because I've never shown anything out of this book on video. So this is the book he got at the witchy store. I've shown the book. But I did a jellyfish. This paper also doesn't hold like the color real well. It always comes out real pale. Unless I layer it a lot. This was just practicing, just color. Uh, another continuous line drawing. Hazel wanted me to do snails. So I, did, I added some snails and some ferns and some flowers. This was me just in my head doodling and then I went back and colored it later. So just doodling with a Sharpie. Uh, this, I, this is probably one of my favorites. And I'm excited to try this again on real watercolor paper. Because I feel like the colors are going to come out better. And then another, this was another exercise in using um, layers to get depth of different shading. And I used a, which was a not a good idea on this paper. I should have had something behind it. I used a colored pencil to kind of outline it. So it mixed media. And then some more flowers I did. And you can see where I was drawing my circles. I think that flower looks cool. And that's the last thing I think I have in this book. So I'm excited to use some of my new um, supplies that I purchased. We talk all the time in knitting and any craft that we do, you know, testing out supplies and buying and then purchasing, like buying one fixed circular of a brand you want to try and then trying it before you buy like that whole set. Um, same thing here. I've been playing with Crayola watercolor with Haze for years. I finally started really wanting to paint just more recently and um, so I just dove and bought you know I'm not gonna lie it was a hundred I spent hundred and sixty five dollars okay so hundred and sixty five dollars I got a book of 20 pages I got the small books I got a set of four brushes I bought the set of watercolor which was like eighty dollars three pots which were like eight dollars a piece and what else did I get Oh, I bought some gel pens because I want to be able to put like some detail. So I bought a white, a silver, a black, and a gold. So, uh, and I think that's it. I think that's it. So, yeah, I spent $165, but I've now upgraded to some better supplies, and I feel like I won't be... I'm not frustrated when I'm doing these. I feel like I'm not getting the results that I should be getting. So I'm excited to be able to have better results. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to work on my Ripple camisole because I really want to have it finished for the next episode. Um, yeah, and that's where we're at. So once that's off the needles, I'm very excited. I watched, I was on the Zoom yesterday with Barb and one of the ladies, I don't remember names, she had made an, a ranunculus with a cotton linen. And I'm like, that is what I'm casting on next with those yarns that I got really, really discounted at the Blue Pelican in North Carolina. So I think that might be next on my list. I am so done knitting with the fingering weight. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It might go on my machine and I make some scrubbies. That might be what I end up doing with it because I'm not going to make anything else with that. And I don't want to do fingering weight washcloths. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> that might be, or maybe I'll crochet with it and make some washcloths. I don't know. Either way, I'll be done with it. I'm so over it. I'm, I'm really over that. I, when I got to the top parts and I was like, oh, I'm like so close now, like all that body work and now I'm like really close. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. So, all right. Other than that, I hope everybody is uh, taking care of themselves and each other, checking on loved ones and friends and people you care about and the whole spiel that I give at the end. And I appreciate everybody who's been checking in on me because it was needed. And I really do appreciate it a whole lot. <laughs> so I hope to see you all in the next episode and yeah, peace, love, and happy crafting, whatever that craft may be. Bye. Luna, psst, psst. what are you doing? Psst, psst. Why are you rubbing your face in my shoe? Weird. Weirdo. <laughs> Such a weirdo. Oh my. Cute, <laughs> cute weirdo. <laughs> Bye.
I'm a crazy kid.